Hello and welcome back to the Dimap channel. Welcome back to the Dimap channel. If you're new to me, thanks very much for clicking on this video. I'm Bilton, Chris Bilton, I'm a jeweler from London. Uh, now living in Japan, I've been here over a year now and I've set up my own little workshop here and I'm making jewelry making instructional videos to share everything I've learned over the previous 20, 24 odd years as a professional jeweler making high-end bespoke handmade expensive shiny things so welcome all right let's bang out another beginner's guide uh, i quite like doing these because they're quite quick and easy to create and also i think they're very important for for beginners to watch because it, like if, if i consider what how i would feel if i was looking to learn something for the first time i would appreciate getting information from someone that's already got years experience doing what i want to learn to do because then if you do, if you follow their advice, you can proceed confidently and then you don't have doubt when you're trying things for the first time. Because you know, if you're trying to teach yourself with no extra information, something's not going well, you don't really know whether you need to try that way more or there's a new, different, better way. Uh, so to be to have these video guides on YouTube, I think gonna be really useful for a lot of beginners. Also beginners, uh, very important people in the trade because um, we need new new recruits to take up hand making jewelry and keep keep the whole art form going. So when I'm done and I'm leaving this world, I'll hand the gauntlet over to you so you can be in charge and keep this uh, keep the flame going for hand making jewelry. And uh, you will also know what it's like to be a typewriter in a world full of laptops. <laughs> okay, I just found this. Um, uh, what's that? A <laughs> wedding ring, like a wedding band in my scrap box. I think I was making that, anyway, yeah, this is out of my scrap box. This video is not about the ring, it's about the ring stretcher machine. Uh, it's an essential tool, I think. You can make minor adjustments to wedding rings, uh, going up or down, basically you're pumping that. This is kind of expanding, it's like springs inside and it kind of just expands gently. So you can just sort of pump things up. Uh, also, that bottom section, it's just a flat piece there. You can push that down with quite a lot of force. And this is like kind of cone, tapered cone shapes, varying sizes. So you can put a, a wedding ring in there and just gently push it down. And it forces it into the cone shape and then you turn around, do it again the other way and uh, reduces the size of rings very quickly. Okay, before you put a ring on the, on the, on the thing, <laughs> um, You've got to anneal it, you've got to get the metal soft. And there's a risk to it because solder joins, you don't want to anneal it so much. Like say you've been given a ring to size, you've got to kind of anneal it. Uh, if it's been sized before, there'll be a piece in there, uh, there'll be solder joins, you don't know whether it's been done with easy solder. So you've got to do it very carefully. Okay, I'm not going to turn this into a half hour video. Not my buff sticks video went on for half an hour, madness. Uh, so yeah. Maybe I'll go into this a bit more. I did do a video on annealing, but I didn't, it was, it was just about getting the metal hot. It wasn't actually about annealing pieces because there's a few things to consider as well. But yeah, basically the solder joins at the top. I know where it is. If I didn't know where it was, I'd heat the whole thing up gently. Uh, solder sort of oxidizes at a different temperature to the rest of the metal and it just stays a different color. So you can find a solder join, join easily just by heating a piece up gently. But yeah, I don't want the solder join to flood. And I don't know how much tension is in the ring as well. So I'm getting it soft to the opposite side of the solder joint first. I mean, it's only a bit of silver, so I'm proceeding quite carefully. So I just try and get it hot and then just move that heat, heated section up towards the top. Do the solder joint last. But you have, at the same time, as well as being careful to solder joint, you have got to get it kind of annealed as well. Because otherwise, the area with the join in if it's not annealed, it's also the hardest and most brittle, so you're sort of making it more likely to break it. So you've, you've got to anneal it. Every single one I've seen in my life has like numbers or letters up there. I don't know why, because this moves. Like, no one ever uses that as a guide for the ring size, because it's kind of got a sort of movie springy bit to it, so you can't trust it. You always just take it off and check the size on your ring stick. I wish they'd just leave that smooth because it just causes, if anything, it's causing damage to the ring. So if you're really forcing that up, these little grooves and sharp edges of the engraving on the numbers and letters, it's just going to put marks inside of rings. So if you're a tool manufacturer, please just leave these alone. So my ring's on there, yeah? <laughs> so my ring's on there. Uh, pull it towards you, it's closed. 
rings on there. I have the join towards me. Just keep an eye on it. I, I want to look at it because you can sometimes see them start to split. Uh, just push it gently and then go down a bit. And then what I do is I rotate it a bit because I don't believe these are... Um, what's the word? Tell me what the word is. Expanding. Uh, I don't believe they're expanding evenly, so I, I spin the ring round and give it a little pump either way. My technique used to be kind of just like punching it gently. Uh, I don't do that anymore. I'd rather keep an eye on it and just go up. I might even break this ring on purpose just so you can see what happens when a ring breaks. Um, but yeah, you should, should know what the size is before it goes on. Um, give it a few pumps, go up half size, one size, and anneal it again. Depends what the metal is, depends how thick it is, depends if there's engraving inside, depends uh, just on a few factors, like condition of the ring. Sometimes like a section of it is really thin, just where it's worn out the way someone wears it. Um, yeah, and then turn it over and do the same, because that's slightly tapered, yeah? So you don't, don't want to push one side out and leave it like that. Turn the ring over. So you're not going to get end up with any sort of coney shapeness to the shank. And then keep it horizontal on there as well. Don't try and stretch it up slightly tilted. Uh, so rotate it, keep it horizontal, turn it over and do the same, and keep it annealed. So that's sizing it up, yeah. I mean, there's a million things I can talk about. Checking over a ring before putting it on that ring stretcher. Sometimes hallmarks are stamped in extra deep. That can cause a section of the ring to be weak. Engraving, if it's really deep in a certain spot, can cause a weak spot in the ring. Uh, just dodgy solder joins. Have a look. If you suspect you can see a solder join just with your naked eye, have a look with your loop as well. It might be a chance. There's a slight kind of line there, and then just any kind of force on it, because it's putting quite a lot of pressure on the inside of the ring. It could just split it open, so you can avoid a headache. Or if you've got a customer come to you, you can do all these checks just by looking at it and then tell them what's likely to happen if you try and size it up. So let them know in advance what the risks are, because there are risks to working in jewellery. And you can only do this, you can, I have seen people get away with it, but you can only really stretch rings up that don't have any settings, like any holes in there, because that hole, if there's a hole drilled in it, that hole is a weak spot, and it will, just, it will only stretch on that weak spot, and it will just tear apart any settings. So only try and size up wedding rings, wedding bands with no stone set in them. Right, I was doing a lot of talking about that, sizing up. Sizing down, have a look around the outside. This one had a bit of a lumpy solder join, which uh, is no good because we're about to compress it down. You need a, you need a kind of good, good sort of even surface going around it. If there's just one section where there's a lump, it's gonna kind of ruin its ability to squash down nicely. Uh, but having, if you're sizing up a ring, um, like this one, yeah, it was kind of unfinished. It was smoother on the inside, but that lumpy bit on the solder on the outside probably did act, give the ring a little bit of extra strength over the join. So, something you might need in the future. You can buy these, yeah. Um, you can buy them just with the ability to size things up, but spend a bit more and get one with the ability to push down as well. You may as well. Uh, also, make sure it's got Two, two sides because you inev inevitably it will only just fit correctly in one of the holes and that side they look very similar but there are differences in the size so you basically you need to find one where the ring sort of sits in the hole but not too far in so you can push it down but not too far out you're going to damage the edge of the ring on the corner so see on this side it's not really working that one's too far on top, it won't go in there. This one's too far down, I can't push it down any further. So hopefully, one of these smaller ones is gonna work. There you go, that one, luckily, the smallest one. So that's, that's just about right. It's just sort of half in there, half out. So place that in there. Make sure it's horizontal. Don't really wanna be forcing it down one side because you can get unlucky and it will just push it unevenly down into it, kind of ruins it. And what I do is, I just put it on it with its own weight, making sure it's sat, it's pushed it down nice and horizontally. Right now that's in there, yeah. I don't just like yank on it. I wanna check in your size, knowing how much you gotta go down. Go down very carefully. What I tend to do is I hold onto it quite tight with a lot of strength, but I'm moving it carefully, yeah, even though there's a lot of strength, a lot of my weight of my arms in there. So sometimes I even put my elbow on there and then I can just 
just carefully put it down because so I push that down a tiny amount even though this ring would really easily squash right down you need the ability to just pull it down a tiny bit because it might just be like quarter of a size wrong and if you go down too far um, you've then got to size it back up again and it's even more risky you don't really don't want to be going up and down or ring sizings just just get it right so I think it's probably easier to make a mistake going down because you can just put too much strength into something especially a delicate little ring like that if that's going to come across on camera but I can see a slight coney shape like this side is the narrower it's got a narrower inner circumference now to that one I can see that with my eye I don't know if you can on the screen so that's because I just pushed it quite far down one way so now I will turn it over make sure that's flat yep turn it over again all the way down I should have straightened it up quite nicely yeah again I can see that looks straight now I don't know if you can check it on your stick make sure your size is right some people yeah really sloppy with their sizings like they would call that a size k I like no it's not a size k that's a that's like a j and three quarters or uh, a leading edge k um otherwise then you've got k directly the line under the middle and then the other side would be like k trailing edge borderline k and a quarter um that after polishing after buzzing it out and polishing that would probably go up a little bit to k and a quarter like people's fingers yeah they change like even even my watch at the moment because the weather's like summer's ended yeah we're like deep into autumn and it's cooled right down um I swear my watch feels looser. It's like my wrists are smaller somehow. Uh, my skull rings, I wear like, I've got a few. I've got to wear like skull rings, yeah, and it's got like a quite a, a wide band on there. Um, that feels really tight in the summer. Now, uh, it comes, and, comes off and goes on quite easy. So it's just, when you're hot, you're all expanded all over. Also, people's right hands, if they're right-handed, their finger sizes will be bigger than their left hand. If they're left-handed, their left hand will have bigger finger sizes than their right hand. Uh, it's little things like that. And no one's finger is perfectly round as well. If you've got a size of ring and you can't get it perfectly round for any reason because of settings, um, a little bit rugby ball shape, it's not the end of the world. Uh, people will understand if you explain to them why you couldn't get it perfectly round afterwards. As long as you do it neatly, you don't want to have a wonky ring, but slightly egg, egg shape is, is okay. And it'll feel fine on a, on a ring, on a finger. Okay, I've got a whole world of information to share on like ring sizings and stuff like that. Like sizing rings, I've done thousands. It's probably the thing I've done the most in my career. It's just sizing rings. I've done thousands of them, literally thousands uh, over 20 years. Uh, it's a shame, like out here in Japan, bas basically I can't read, write or speak. Like, can you imagine what it's like for me here? Like I just walk around, I don't recognize, I don't, can't understand any writing. I can't understand what anyone's saying. Uh, it's quite a strange experience for me being out here. Uh, but yeah, it's a shame because I can't offer to do like repairs or too much custom work for people. Everything has to be done with my wife's help and she's like the most busy person in the world. So it's a bit of a non-go area really, that doing that, setting up a kind of proper jeweler's shop here for me at the moment. Uh, but it's a shame because I, if I could get customers rings in quite often, I can show you different examples and how to do repairs and stuff and things to look out for. That would be a nice, useful thing for many people on the channel. It's not something I can offer at the moment because uh, my Japanese isn't good enough. I'm working on it, but um, at the moment, can't do it. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there. Ring stretcher, quite a simple bit of kit. It's an essential bit of kit. Um, don't get the cheapest, get, get one that has all the, all the uses and you can't get too far wrong. Just work carefully, look out for solder joins, Ch check your rings, check what you're about to size up carefully for joins, weak spots, and you won't have too many problems. Right, let me just break let me just break this ring so I'll show you what it's like when they break. So I will put the I'll put the join facing the camera. Where's the join? That's the join. So I'll put the join like over that line, yeah. Just so you know where that is. It helps if I push it down first. So Whoa. Goddamn silver, making a fool out of me. Gotta adjust my camera. So I put the ring on here. I put the join over this line, yeah, so you know where that is. I'll give it a couple of pumps and hopefully it'll break. Whoa. See how much silver stretches. All right, all right.
right, come on, Silver, break. I don't know what's going on with this ring, it shouldn't be that stretchy. There we go. So that's snapped the join. I'll show you a close up of what it's like. Can you see that? It's a horrible kind of torn sort of edge. Now that has to be, say you were trying to size that up, yeah, and you had like another size to go. You have now, sorry about the focus, you have now got a file that back flat, losing even more metal out of the ring, then join it up, solder it up, and then you've got even more sizing to do. So if it's, uh, it's not a nice thing to happen and it can pull you right up. You may even end up having to put a piece in it if like you're getting a problem somewhere else with a engraving or there's a thin spot that's threatening to break as well. Uh, you gotta be careful or you can get in trouble make doing something quite simple. So if that's the case and you can't risk stretching up even anymore, you've gotta put a piece in. So then you're using your own silver and gold. Then you've got two solders, it's costing you a lot of money, it's costing you a lot of extra time. And then also after putting that piece in, you've got to file it up a lot more. So you're risking sort of damaging the ring even more. Uh, yeah, be careful because you don't want stuff to break on you like that. All right, thanks for watching. So yeah, ring stretcher is an essential bit of kit and uh, don't just go for the cheapest. Well, you can go for the cheapest, but as long as it's the cheapest of the ones that size up and size down and have the double-sided cones on the, on the double-sided plate underneath, uh, and then, then you'll be all right. I think this one worked out. I bought it in, in Japan, yeah, it's in, all in yen, but I think it, the equivalent was about 180 pounds, something like that. Uh, yeah, you've got to spend about that much, maybe, I don't know. Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please hit like and subscribe. You can comment, you can share it in your Facebook groups or wherever you think it may be useful for other people as well. I'd appreciate that. Helps the channel grow. And yeah, I hope you go through my other videos as well. And uh, I'm sure there's stuff you can learn about, learn from. Thanks for watching. Bye.